one here either. Normally, I've got them everywhere. Well, well that'd be good if I could pull the pull my question, get you to pull my question out of a little black bag on your side. <laughs> <laughs> not, not today. <laughs> well, something a bit different, um, and it, it, it's it's something that I well, actually, it's been topical in the news this year, which is kind of odd. Uh, but the whole aliens thing, you know, I don't know if you followed any of this. It's been pretty fascinating, and who knows whether it's just a distraction or whatever it is. But yeah. since I was a kid, I, I was always fascinated with the outer space of of life as as much as the inner space. So just the sheer distances that we deal with when we look up at stars and and planets and the cosmos and and really wanted to hear your your opinion. It's, I mean, the the direct question is, you know do we have cosmic neighbors but that's a i think there's a much more to it than that which is to hear your your perspective on it you know as these kind of beings we are on this planet and i know we'll talk about different realms but maybe if we start off just from the more kind of traditional realm of, of the one we live in every day and and do we have neighbors you know, and when I say neighbours, you know, maybe a few million light years away. But wanted to hear your views on on that, and interested to dig into it a bit. Oh, brilliant! I'm really glad you brought it up because it's a favourite hobby of mine. Et oh, okay. stuff. Oh, I didn't know that. That's good. Oh, absolutely. I'm um, I'm off to uh, some point in the near future. I'm off to Alaska because a scientist not too long ago discovered these strange emanations coming out of the ground in Alaska in the Alaskan Triangle, which is like the Bermuda Triangle. And they've looked into it. Um, they were trying to figure out what it was. And then fortunately, the um, Chinese let off a nuclear bomb test. And every time they do that, scientists in the West use the seismic uh, after effects to have a look in, into the Earth's crust. So they let the bomb off, they had a look at this, and lo and behold, this huge pyramid showed up underground in Alaska. It's oh, black, wow. it's like obsidian, I know. And it's releasing some kind of transmitting thing. So I'm going to go and have a look at that. But as you probably know, <clears throat> UFOs have been painted, medieval paintings, there's UFOs in the background, you know, they're, they're in cave paintings, they're all over the place. Aboriginals have got them in Australia, all over their caves and rock paintings. They're all over the world. It's obvious that something has been coming and going. There's documented, there's documents recording um, an aerial war in the Middle Ages. I might get this wrong, but it was like in Bulgaria or Poland, somewhere around that area. And there was a, an aerial fight between all of these strange craft. This is in the Middle Ages, and it was recorded. Yeah. And, of course, as we all know, there's like uh, 100 billion stars in our galaxy alone. Every star on average has got like, on average, four planets to seven planets. Some have a lot more, but average, that's it. So if there's average four planets around each star, that's 400 billion planets in our galaxy alone. People that think we are the only life in this galaxy, I don't want to talk to them. I don't even want to talk about them. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't think I know any of them, I'm hoping, anyway. Yeah, but, good, uh, good. It scares me, people that think like that, but yeah. But it they're is. there. Um, a lot of people don't know this either, Matt. The original um, and still prevailing under under the board religion in Tibet is yeah. extraterrestrial based. All of their, as far as they're concerned, their ancestors are extraterrestrial and they still live there in the Himalayas. I spent almost 20 years in the Himalayas, so I've looked deeply into that. I have, in astraling, I've had experiences with what I would call ETs. In saying all of that, they are also other dimensional creatures, beings, I won't call them creatures, that share the same coordinates as ours on our planet, but in a different dimension. Sometimes we will perceive them and we will see that as ghosts. Sometimes they see us or they would perceive us as ghosts. So they're there. They've been coming and going a long time. Of course, there are genetic geneticists looking into ancient mummies and things like that and they found that some of these things that they found has human 
female DNA, the mother, mm. but the father of these mummies wasn't human. There's, there's nothing in their DNA that can be correlated to anything on this planet. There is so much evidence. And of course, there's the government has now brought it all out and disclosed. They can't hold it anymore. They can't admit that they can't, how could I put it? They've been lying for a long time and finally they've let it go because they can't hold on to it anymore. The information I'm talking about. So the UFOs are here. People have been seeing them. Everyone knows about it. The government's re said, yeah, you're right. They're there. And we've been lying. We don't know what they are. We don't know who they are who they are. We don't know where they come from. This is where we are at. The last thing I heard was this. I don't know why this is so specific. This January is when the government's actually going to show us stuff. Wow. That's interesting. That's well, good. Good. You've said it. You've said it now. So we, we, we've got it on record and this will be what I've heard. What I've heard. <laughs> well, you, you said it before, before January. So we will, yeah, that that'll be interesting. See, I the problem for me is when governments say anything, it, you start to then disbelieve. I'd be more convinced if the government said it was mm -hmm. nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, it, because I it, when a government starts to say something's going on, then you wonder what's really going on. You know, it's like, well, yeah. it's very hard to trust governments, particularly U.S. government. I mean, you know, Isn't that's sad. It is very. It's a. I mean, it's the reality of politics. Unfortunately, it's um. You know, it's different I everywhere, agree. but certainly Western politics, which you're used to, I'm, I'm sure. So it blows me out that we allow it to occur. Do you have you? Can I give you a one minute quick blurb on on government? Go for it. Thank you. Let's say you and I have just um, you and I decided to get together and open up a club, an exclusive club, and our club we're going to call it Thailand, or we're going to call it a country. It's a country. We're going to use it as a club. We want people to come into our country, our club. So we have policies coming to our club. There'll be hardly any tax whatsoever. There'll be no assholes allowed in this country. You won't be suppressed or oppressed. You can come into our club and play games and meet like-minded people. There's no criminals in our club. There's plenty of money in our club. You can come here and just thoroughly enjoy yourself for one donation a year. Mm. beautiful club and it is so good and it's got so many lurks and perks and services it blows us out and we thought we were going to get about 50 people joining our club but lo and behold we got 200,000 people joins our club you and I are now in a dilemma we've got a club we've got 200,000 people and another million people want to join you and I can't keep up with the administration we can't keep up with the maintenance and we can't keep up with the accounts so we hire two little old ladies, Martha and Glenn, Glenna, Glennis, and they start doing our accounts for us. We pay them money to do that, and they do a good job. Two years down the track, four billion people want to join our club, and there's absolutely no way we can handle all of this. So we set up a little administration department. That department, we employ 50 people. That means that you and I can now focus on our customers, focus on our club members and our little administration department will do all of the accounts, do all of the maintenance, make sure the electricity bills are paid, etc. One year later, let's say that that administration department turns around to us and starts telling us who we can have sex with, who we can live with. Um, what part of society we're going to have, what kind of education we're going to have. They tell us how we should live, how we should eat, what we should eat, what we're allowed to do, when we're allowed to do it, who we're allowed to marry, how much money we're allowed to make. What are you going to do? You're going to turn around to those people and go F off, aren't you? You're going to say, you know what, this isn't what we employed you for. Piss off. Who the hell are you telling us what to do with our lives? We pulled you off your couch, we gave you a job, we paid you heaps of money to do a job, and you're not doing that job. You've turned on us, you've threatened us, you threatened to kidnap us and put us in a box with bars if we don't do what you tell us to do. That's the government. Interesting. And you know what? It sounds so similar to organised religion if you also then put some kind of book or something else at the top of it rather than just a... A political party. <laughs> it's Absolutely. Similar structures.
Now, this is this is why I brought it up because it was something you said about these kind of things. Not too many thousands of years ago, we were killing and raping and hurting and pillaging and overthrowing and invading. This is what we did. It was horrible. So religion pops its head up. Let's see if we can fix it. Let's see if we can control these people with fear. 2,000 years later, we're still killing and raping and robbing and stealing and invading each other's privacy. So that didn't actually work. It got worse, if anything. Government ushered in. Okay. Raping, pillaging, killing, invading, doing all of these things. Let's see what government can do. Hundreds and hundreds of years later, here we are, raping, pillaging, killing, etc. It's still going on. That didn't work. They're not pulling us out of the shit. So what do you do about it? There are people out there. There are enlightened people out there. There are beautiful people out there. There are self-mastered people out there. Why aren't we voting for those? Why aren't we putting an ad out? for a job for those kind of people to come and run our administration or run our government? Why aren't we voting for enlightened people? Why Why is it the way it is? I don't want any answers. I'm just saying mm. these are questions people should start asking. Yeah, I do. Honestly, actually, I've wondered this. I, and I wonder, I, I have wondered it and contemplated it many times. And I, I wonder if it's also because... <laughs> If you are one of those people, would you want to go anywhere near that job? You know, this is the other no. thing. <laughs> uh, <it's> like... <laughs> Wonderful. So it's a conundrum. Uh, this is where you sit back and leave it up to nature. Na nature makes doesn't nature. Yeah. If you watch life itself unfolding, it is unfolding through the process of trial and error. And eventually it's going to see the error in the ways of the monkeys that we are. And um, it will change. It will get better. After everything we just said right now, in comparison to the Middle Ages, we're still doing a hell of a lot better. Uh, that's well, true. I mean, it's always good to look at it that way. I think that's, yeah, without a doubt. We are def Sometimes you can be kind of lost in this moment of, when I say moment, I mean this small type part of history you get to be part of, which is such a speck of whatever it is, 60, 70, 80, you know, hundred years. Yeah. So, and, and it can seem, yeah, it, it's when you look back on, on millennia that you start to see progress in, in some ways at the masses. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at the world, the way it is right now, everyone's scared. There's like economic collapse, blah, blah, blah. Anyone my age, mid sixties, we've seen this happen three times. It, it's part of the process, this, this collapse. So they call it. Um, it's happened, like I said, three times in my lifetime. You've probably seen it happen a couple of times. Yeah, you know? yeah. Anyone that's aware, anyone that's watching the world and not caught up in their own little bubble dwelling situation, it's um, you see it. It's a pattern. Whether it's meant to be is, I don't know whether it's meant to be or not, but it is happening and it does happen. And we always come back up again and, you know, you know, when you go on an aeroplane ride and the airplane ride might be quite a long ride, but the staff are so good at bringing the coffee along just at the right time and bringing a few biscuits mm -hmm. along just so, and they spread it out. And it's like you're constantly doing something for 10 hours on an airplane. And it's really wonderful. They do it to us. Governments do that to us. They keep stringing you along, string you along. And this big, long, you, you kind of miss the shit, they hope. And you get strung along this year it's um northern everyone keep watching northern north korea Ooh, everyone gets scared of north korea and then when no one's interested and no one cares anymore okay let's focus over here COVID. Ooh, everyone goes yeah distraction distraction then when no one gives a shit about COVID anymore let's go over here oh economic collapse ah and it goes on and on and on and on and on and, and yet through all of these dickhead bodies like governments and religions trying to control everyone, at the end of the day, it was you that got yourself through it, nobody else. You think every moment that life has brought you, some moments have been, oh, shit, some moments have been wonderful, some moments have balled you over and knocked you over, some moments have nearly killed you. But whatever the present moment has ever brought into your life at any given time in your life, you dealt with it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here now. 
you have dealt with everything life has thrown at you and you got through it. It wasn't because of your government. It wasn't because of your religion. It was because of your own willpower and capacity. And I'm saying this to everybody in the world, not just you. Good words. I don't know why I said that, but it felt good. <laughs> well, look, before we, before we wrap this one, because we were talking about well, we're talking about gut. We were talking about aliens. But we were talking about government. You mentioned January. I know it's not a premonition. It's just a, a statement, and we'll see what happens. But if something does come out, then what do you think they might tell us? Any idea? I think they might tell us that they'll break it very slowly. They're terrified of us. They will tell us that life has indeed been discovered. And it's a lot closer than that we anticipated. And either at the same time or not too long later, they will start to tell us that contact has been made, intelligent contact. And then before you know it, they'll go, oh, this contact, they've just told us that the speed of light isn't the speed limit after all. They can get here from the next galaxy in like three seconds. They've got this wormhole thingy going on that they're going to come and talk to us about. What they won't tell you is they probably promised them 150,000 human test subjects in return. X-File stuff. <laughs> I mean, that was I, a whole joke. I know, I know. I mean, up until the last part, I'm like, I, I, that for me, I love that idea, but I'm also, I'd be very kind of disbelieving of anyone understanding the kind of wormhole thing. Yeah, as in, to your point of, anyone in control seems to be so unenlightened how could they have that sort of knowledge to knowledge and be running the place the way they are so i'm kind of so skeptical about yeah, frankly speaking that is probably how someone would have had to get here you'd think so but um yeah we shall see i'd love to hear that kind of information but we're not going to get not, a full they're truth. not that far they're not that far matt there is other life in our solar system put it that way i'm not going to say how i know or why i know but it is there there is life in our solar system um very close as well that's Look, it I, I can't not press you on that otherwise everyone will kill me for not asking you for a bit more you can tell me you can't tell me anymore but i got to ask you what you mean by that There are many worlds in our solar system. There's not just the basic seven or nine planets or whatever there's meant to be at the moment. There's many moons out there that have that life lives on in um, Europa and the other one beginning with an E. And so uh, I forgot. Are you talking physical or dimensional? So are you talking like different? No, I'm talking physically in, in this world. There are like, there's one that everyone knows about. There is a moon out there in our solar system. It is a complete ocean covered in ice. Yep. There, there is movement in the ice. The ocean's about 100 miles deep. It's warm. There are uh, geysers of, of uh, water being spurted out hundreds of kilometres into space from this moon, which means there's a lot of heat in there pushing that water out. We've sent many, many probes through these geysers and every sign of life is in there. And it's an ocean with a warm core, and it's as old, at least as old as this planet. Then there are things in there. I can even tell you, it doesn't matter. I could go on and on and on. I've looked into this a lot, I've astrally, spiritually, physically. But we're talking about things that I can't just pull evidence out of my pocket and sure, go, there yeah. you go. So I'm not going to get into it right now. You know, just watch. Just watch everybody. There are there is other life out there. The the universe itself is not only alive, but it is riddled in the life that it, it is that it is. We we are far from alone. Our universe might be alone, but within the universe, it is riddled. Think about it this way: if you're standing in the desert, feeling very alone because you're the only creature standing there, inside you there are Billions and trillions of other little creatures growing in this universe that you call Matt. Bacteria, flukes, parasites, viruses, they're all living inside you. And if they all die, you disappear. You've got two kilos of bacteria sitting in your gut just waiting for you to die. And then it'll eat you. 
that's your own personal little two kilos of death while it's waiting for you to die it's digesting your food for you but once that's done and you're dead it'll eat you as well and uh, that's a community all on its own you know so as above so below I love looking at it that way. When you go the micro level, it's very interesting when you start. I mean, we started off this conversation talking about the, the vastness, but yeah, you can also go the other way and, and start to go real small and, and it gets just as weird and wonderful. So as above, so below is an incredible fact. If you look into it, hmm. it if you look into your body, you will see how the universe works. If you look at the universe first, you'll see how your body works. It's brilliant. I'm not going to, that would take five years to explain all of that. So we won't go into that. Well, we did our 20 minutes. So yeah, we definitely, we don't want to do a five year podcast. That would be a, that would, would, would probably, we'd probably bore the audience on that one, but um, yeah. Yeah, it's always enlightening speaking to you. So um, that was good. Beautiful. Always a pleasure talking to you, Matt. Always. This is 1095.